Hey everyone, Ari Malpour here, and today we're going to show you how to use and set up an NVMe hat with an NVMe drive on your Raspberry Pi 5 device. What this is, is an alternative to using a micro SD card, and we're going to show you how to get started. You will see blazing fast performance and a huge improvement by installing an NVMe drive instead of your old fashioned micro SD card. So grab all of your parts, grab your Raspberry Pi, your NVMe hat, your NVMe drive, join me and let's get started. So one of the things I wanna just give you a very brief introduction about the NVMe process versus the micro SD card is you would wanna ask me, you know, my micro SD card works fine. Why would I want to boot up or run an NVMe SSD drive on my Raspberry Pi? It's a good question. And also, uh, you know, NVMe's historically have been very, very expensive. So first of all, NVMe's have come down in price significantly. The one I will be demonstrating here that's half a terabyte cost me about 30 bucks on Amazon for that device. So that's number one. Number two, the hat itself. So the extension board that you can install the NVMe, that also I bought for around 15 bucks. Again, third party, not directly from the Raspberry Pi, but even that one is relatively cheap. The thing with NVMe is that it's robust and it's really fast. And with micro SD cards, if you notice, at least I've noticed with my projects, and you've seen I've done a lot of projects with Raspberry Pis and other devices using micro SD cards, is that every single time you put in the micro SD card, you unplug it, you take it out, you put it back in, you take it out, you flash it, you flash it again, you flash it again. I've cycled through so many micro SD cards over the, the years doing all of these tutorials. And so what happens is over time, those micro SD cards degrade on a physical level and also a performance, they get slower and slower, even from the outset, can be significantly slower than the speeds that you can achieve with NVMe. And so when I came across these adapter boards, these hats that you can then put an NVMe drive on, and then I researched how cheap NVMe drives have gotten, I was extremely excited to test this out. And so I think you will find that the performance is going to be exponentially greater with an NVMe drive than running off of a micro SD card. You're also going to find that it's really not that much more expensive. Again, 30 bucks for half a terabyte, that's cheaper than a micro SD card I can get for that size and that speed. So definitely check out the rest of this tutorial in length and play around with it and then post your comments and let me know what you think because I was really excited about this and I really wanted to share this with all of you guys. So post your comments, let me know what you think. So there are two ways that I'm gonna show you how to flash your NVMe hard drive here. And the first demonstration is going to be flashing it with a USB enclosure. This is a USB-C enclosure. I've put the NVMe drive in here. I've even labeled it so I don't forget what's in here. <clears throat> and I'm going to plug this in over USB-C so I can get the high speed. So I've plugged this device in. Now it's going to show up as a hard drive. So when I open up my Raspberry Pi imager, I can go to choose device, Raspberry Pi 5, choose the operating system. I'm gonna choose just the, the standard operating system. We've done this in the getting started tutorials in the past. So this should be pretty familiar with you. Uh, and I'm gonna take this one, the 64 bit and then choose the storage. And now, as you can see here, my 512 gigabyte NVMe storage is right there. So then I hit next, and then it will prompt me to uh, give permissions to then flash the drive. I've actually already flashed the drive. So there's one other last step I wanna show you right afterwards. So if you go to the actual drive over here, you will see that the there is a file called config.txt. And in this config at the very bottom, I have added two DT param values. There's the PCIe X1, and then there's the PCIe X1 underscore gen equals three. So this will enable PCIe to be bootable. <clears throat> and then also in addition to that, set the, um, I guess they're kind of like beta uh, drivers for setting up PCIe 3.0. Um, caution that, that may you may run into trouble trying to get PCIe 3 speeds, but uh, so you can always disable that later on if you want, but you'll need to set up PCIe 
for uh, the boot config over here. So again, that's right at the base. After we've already flashed the NVMe drive, we're gonna unplug it, plug it back in. It'll show up as this boot FS. We're gonna change config.txt and add these two parameters at the bottom. So an alternative approach to flashing your NVMe drive is to start up your Raspberry Pi device with an SD card. So flash a regular SD card, just like we've done in all the getting started tutorials with the Raspberry Pi imager, insert that card, get it up and running. Also, you'll want to update that boot config, but that's going to be from the command line. So you can see all the commands in the article that's uh, also published with this video. But uh, what we also want to do is once we've updated our boot config, we want to go to accessories. So if you see here, this is the program menu. We want to go to accessories, SD card copier. And so what this utility does, it allows us to copy the exact contents of our SD card onto the NVMe drive. And this is helpful if you don't have a USB enclosure for the NVMe drive. So in this case, I'm gonna go copy from, which is this 64 gigabyte um, SD card that I'm running, and then copy to, which is this one terabyte NVMe drive that I'm using. So I've, I've been switching out a lot of different uh, NVMe drives, So, uh, but it could be any NVMe drive that would be compatible with this Raspberry Pi hat. So. Uh, at that point, you'll go with uh, hit with start and then it'll copy everything over. It actually will go should go pretty fast because you're writing directly to the NVMe from your uh, Raspberry Pi device. And then you will turn off your Raspberry Pi device, take out the SD card and then uh, just leave the NVMe in there and it should boot up with the NVMe uh, on its own. Okay, so I've got my Raspberry Pi 5 over here and this is a little bit different than your standard out of the box Raspberry Pi 5 configuration because I have a few things here. One, I have a base plate that I've actually repurposed from a Raspberry Pi 4. So this isn't 100% exactly the same, but that's okay. It protects the bottom of my Raspberry Pi, especially I'm moving it around onto different surfaces, not a safe ESD mat. Um, so I just wanted to protect it a little bit. The Raspberry Pis are getting more and more expensive over time, so I just want to be a little bit more delicate with it. Also, I've got what's called an active cooling device. This is a fancy word for a heatsink with a fan um, that's hooked up to power. So basically, when it hits a certain temperature, the um, fan turns on and starts to cool down my Raspberry Pi chips. Uh, this is really, really, really important uh, for the newer Raspberry Pis because if you are doing any type of... Uh, edge processing, lots of video outputs, video processing, uh, AI, you know, all, all this stuff that's really intensive on the GPU and the CPU, it's going to heat up very, very quickly. And you don't want to uh, damage or degrade your capability of processing that data. So you want to be able to keep it nice and cool or cool-ish to make sure you don't damage anything. So with that said, I also wanted to note that I've already installed the spacers over here. These are pretty easy. You just need to keep a screw uh, screwdriver in one side um, and then install the spacers that way, or you can have, there are all sorts of different types of spacers that you can install. So that is um, something that you'll have to do on your own to install the spacers. It comes with a whole bunch of spacers. Um, this. Uh, Geek Worm Pi Hat. So with that, we are now going to install the remaining parts of this assembly. So first of all, this is definitely my least favorite part of the Raspberry Pi is the ribbon connector. It's very easy to get this wrong or get this misaligned. So first step is make sure that all of the kind of leads are going into the Raspberry Pi slot over here uh, carefully. So you want to lift this up, which it already is, and then slide it in ever so gently. Try, if you can, to line it up um, as best as possible. If you cannot detect your NVMe drive and you're using the same type of drive that uh, one of the drives that I'm using or recommend in the written tutorial, then the chances are that it, you did not align the cable properly. That happens a lot. If you saw the getting started tutorial using the camera connector with some of the AI examples that I've used in the past, I've run into that issue as well. Sometimes the ribbon cable is just not inserted properly. Okay, so <clears throat> now that I've inserted the ribbon cable on one side, again, you wanna just check it, make sure everything uh, lines up properly. We're going to do the same on the other side. 
This one's a little bit easier. You just kind of slide it in on the side here and then you close the latch. This other one, we had to push the latch down on both sides, two fingers. Again, it's a little tricky, so you see my two fingers, I'm pushing it down. That closes that up. Now I'm going to just put the screws on. So three screws into the spacers. So here's the first one. And you know, the, uh, the standard rule of screwing in something especially very sensitive, um, thin PC boards, you don't want to put mechanical stress on one side more than the other. So I'm kind of screwing them in uh, evenly. So I'm going to screw that in only halfway. Then I'm gonna install the third screw right over here. Okay, now I can start to kind of screw it down. Not too tight, not too tight, and not too tight. And now we can kind of tighten these guys up a little bit. Okay, great. So now I have my uh, NVMe hat right over here. I've got my spacers. I've got my little cable that connects the Raspberry Pi to the NVMe board. That's how they communicate. I'm not going to put my NVMe drive in. I've, I've been experimenting with all sorts of different NVMe drives. This is a one terabyte one from Western Digital. This is a cheapo one from, uh, I don't even remember what these guys were called. I bought this on Amazon. It was some cheap NVMe drive. Uh, you can consult the written tutorial for more details. I have the links over there. So this one, I'm going to put it in right over here. So if you see, I'm going to slowly push in at an angle. So again, I'm coming in at an angle. I'm gonna slowly push it in until those golden fingers are gone. So they need to be hidden at that point. Then I'm going to hold this down. See, it wants to jump back up. NVMe, if you're not familiar with NVMe, they're relatively new in computers. So if you're not used to NVMe, you have to kind of hold it down until you've screwed it down. Again, these guys are really sensitive and can be really expensive. Be really careful with it. As you can see, I'm wearing an EST wrist strap. Just be really sensitive and really gentle <clears throat> with the electronics. Don't force anything. Okay, so at this point, I've got everything installed. Uh, again, we're going to do our final check. Got my ribbon cables, my spacers, obviously, and then my hat, and then the NVMe drive with none of the uh, golden fingers showing over here. So now everything is ready to go. I should be able to just plug it in and turn it on. So today we looked at two different ways of how to flash your NVMe SSD drive in being able to get a full Raspberry Pi image or operating system running on that drive on a Raspberry Pi 5. So we did the SD card copy method and we also demonstrated how to use a USB enclosure in order to copy over or flash your NVMe drive over USB-C. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the rest of the videos in this channel. Hit the subscribe to check out other videos that you will be seeing coming up soon and definitely hit the like button. Thanks for watching.